we are now going to factor the difference of squares. Remember, our difference of squares formula says if I have a plus b times a minus b, this will always multiply out to a squared minus b squared. So looking for this one is very similar to the one we did before, the perfect square trinomial, but this time we only have two terms, both perfect squares, and always a minus between them. If we have that, then we can use our perfect square, or our difference of squares formula. So, for instance, suppose I start with x squared minus 25. Since x, is the perfect, x squared is the perfect square of x, and 25 is the perfect square of 5, and we have a minus between them, this factors as x plus 5, x minus 5. Now keep in mind, if I reversed the order, because I wanted to write the minus first, this works or this works. Only pick one of them, but you can put the plus first or the minus first. It's up to you. I personally prefer to put the plus first. Another example, 36m squared minus 49. Again, this is a perfect square of 6m. This is a perfect square of 7. There's a minus between them. So this factors as 6m plus 7 and 6m minus 7. And we're done. Well, what about a problem like x to the fourth minus 1? Here, we notice that for a variable, if it's got an even power, it's a perfect square of half of that. And 1 is always a perfect square. 1 times 1 is 1. Well, this then factors as x squared plus 1 and x squared minus 1. But wait a second. If I look closely at this one, I notice that it is also a difference of squares formula. Because now we have an x here and a 1 here. So never stop just because you factored once. Always look at your results and say, hey, can I factor this any farther? And since I can, overall this becomes x squared plus 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Notice the x squared plus 1 doesn't go any farther because it's a plus sign. It stops on a plus sign. And so it is, in fact, done. Well, sometimes the problems get even harder than that. Suppose we have x plus y squared minus z squared. Notice that because of the parentheses, this is, in fact, a difference of squares. x plus y from this one, and z from this one. So our answer becomes the first plus the second times the first minus the second. And here is our final answer. And I could have put parentheses in here, but unless they're needed, we don't like them, so we can get rid of those innermost parentheses and just keep the outer ones. Last example, just because I've seen these ones before. Suppose I have x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus y squared. So now I have four terms. And yet my claim is that I'm still going to be able to use the difference of squares formula on this. However, instead of doing grouping like we've always done, I'm going to look inside here, and I'm going to recognize that I have a perfect square trinomial. x squared is x. 3 squared is 9, 3 times x is 3x, twice that is 6x, and so this factors as x plus 3 squared minus y squared. Well then this just follows the same as what we had above. We have something squared minus something squared, so we get as our answer x plus 3 plus y and x plus 3 minus y. And we'll go ahead and let that plus y and minus y sit at the end, even though it doesn't quite order as nicely as we like. We usually like our constants at the end. We'll leave it alone, and we'll take that answer just as written. So remember the goal? To build it to the point that you recognize the difference of squares, and then copy that term twice, one with a plus, the first one plus the second one, times the first one minus the second one.